Hello, this is Ronberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the latent kit. Uh, and also at the end of this video we're going to be able to understand what is humidity ratio or absolute humidity. And we're going to see how this rule of thumb applies to HVAC, alright? So let's start with it. So what we're going to do is start with the main formula. So the rule of thumb says that latent heat, which is QL, is going to be equal to 0.68 times CFM times delta W. All right, so this is pretty much the rule of thumb. Rule of thumb, all right? Rule of thumb. Okay, so in this equation, uh, what we know is like QL is gonna be the latent heat. So let's put in here QL, what is every variable? That's going to be the latent heat. And we have to understand in this case, it's not talking about a specific latent heat because uh, this is gonna be the total latent heat, which is taking into account the moist air in uh, the moist um, uh, part in air. Okay, so because air, we have dry air and wet air. So that's a mix. So this is the wet portion, okay, latent heat. So the units are gonna be BTUs, BTUs per hour, okay? So since we're talking about time, a proper way to express this would be with a dot, which is which is with an hour. But usually, in reality, they don't put the dot. But just to be more specific, that, this dot indicates time, divided by time. Usually, you're not going to see that in the formulas, though, without a dot. Okay, so now let's gonna go, we're going to go with the other one. So CFM is cubic feet per minute, and the other one is delta W. So delta W is actually change. So anything delta is a change. So this change is going to be in what? Change in humidity ratio. So W is humidity, humidity ratio. All right. So what are the units of humidity ratio? In this case, for the rule of thumb, it's going to be grains per pound of dry air. There you go. So GR actually is not grams, it's actually grains. So we're going to put GR is grains. Okay? Grains. So what is grains? So actually what grains are is basically a drop of water. So in order to understand that better, we're going to say that in one pound of water, we're going to have 7,000 grains. Because uh, And also we're not going to be writing grains, so that's why we put GR. Okay, so one pound of water equals to 7,000 grains. Or let's say that this is like droplets, like droplets of water. Let's put a small droplet of water. So that's an equivalent of grains, okay? So now those are the variables and this is the rule of thumb. QL is latent heat and this would be the rule of thumb. Now, what we're trying to do in this video is we're trying to explain where this formula comes from so that way we understand better uh, how everything works, okay? So we're going to underline this with pink just so, so we can see that this is the rule of thumb, okay? And now let's go for red color. We're going to put in here, in order to go uh, and demonstrate this formula, we're going to put in here the original equation. Where everything comes from? Original equation. So it comes from here, original equation. Okay? Original equation. So the original equation actually is the what they teach us in school, college, and fluid dynamics, thermodynamics, and everything. We have that Q latent heat is equal to mass per a specific latent heat. Okay, so this, so actually anything specific is divided by mass. So L is actually the specific latent heat, which is going to be equal to the latent heat divided by mass. That's why it's a specific divided by mass. A specific latent heat, latent heat divided by mass. A specific volume volume divided by mass, a specific enthalpy, BTUs divided by mass per pound. So anything specific is divided by mass. And now if this goes to the other side, we're going to have that Q equals ML. See? Q equals ML. Latent heat equals to mass times a specific latent heat. Okay? So now if we, if we want to talk about BTUs per hour, we're going to put in here a dot 
if this is our mass has to be our to a rate of our so that, that that there's the equation q is equal to m times l so this is we're gonna put this they teach us at a school from school or college they teach us that but we want to but from this equation we're going to obtain this rule of thumb so now in order to make it more technical what we're going to have is q dot is equal to mass but this mass is going to be equal to mass let's say wet air with a dot and in language of thermodynamics this latent heat is written as en a specific enthalpy fg which is the mix of water and gas uh, in here fluid gas so this is a specific enthalpy so in other words in thermodynamics you're gonna uh, be seeing you're gonna be seeing this specific enthalpy which is in other words the latent heat okay so now uh what is mass of wet air so the mass of moist air is going to be equal to uh, we, we've seen this in other videos uh, if you remember the other video that was about calculate the gpm of air passing through a coil that was in another video that we have we have this formula mass of wet air is going to be equal to mass of dry air and the difference of uh humidity ratio difference of humidity ratio there we go we have this formula in another video so what we're going to do is now q which is q of latent heat is going to be equal to mass of wet air and the dot is per time divided by time right so let's put this in another color so let's say this is green okay so that's going to be mass of air times delta this is pretty much a delta right see let's put in here a delta delta w times what if, what is in there already so that's going to be a specific enthalpy a specific enthalpy fh which is pretty much the latent heat um this is more technical okay and this comes from thermodynamic language okay so this is associated with steam tables all right so now let's continue with this and what is mass of air so this in this case we're going to talk about also the density as we usually do so mass of air is going to be equal to density times volume of air okay so since this is divided by time this is divided by time too okay so this is going to be pounds per hour and this is going to be a cubic feet per hour see so that's why there is a dot in there but uh, from other videos we see that if VA is in cubic feet per hour see in, if VA is in cubic feet per hour we say that VA in cubic feet per hour is going to be equal to CFM times 60 because this is in minutes and then in one minute there is an hour I mean sorry in one hour there's 60 minutes it's just like a conversion factor instead of putting this VA we're going to be putting just CFM times 60 in order to have the this in, uh, the units consistent that's all one hour 60 minutes okay so now the other part that we have to take into account is this um no let's let's do it step by step so this is going to be Q equals instead of mass of A I'm going to put density okay I'm going to put this in another color see this is going to be density because we're, we're going to replace this in here okay density times volume of air and then we're going to keep the color changing humidity ratio times delta f h all right so let's continue with this equation so q equals uh again density okay so what is now va so va actually is this conversion factor so in the conversion factor we're going to have this that's going to be cfm times 60 you know in one hour 60 minutes okay times we're copying whatever is left next is changing humidity ratio times specific 
enthalpy, which is the latent heat, specific latent heat. Okay? All right. So now that we have everything, we only need to take care of... Oh, actually, we need to take care of this also. Okay? Because um, let's analyze the units very quickly in here. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to use white. Okay? So density, the units of density are pounds per cubic feet. Okay? These units are going to be CFM is cubic feet. I'm sorry about that. This is cubic feet. Cubic feet per hour. Why is it in hour? Because times 60 is the conversion factor. These units in here are going to be pounds. Okay. Those units are going to be pounds divided by pounds. So why this is a little bit confusing, right? That's why the humidity ratio is talking about pounds of moist air of wet air, pounds of moist air or wet air divided by pounds of dry air. Okay. So whenever whenever I'm not putting the the dry air, that means dry air. So whenever I put a W, it's like moist or wet. There we go. And now a specific enthalpy, as we know. A specific enthalpy is enthalpy is in BTUs, but since it's a specific, divided by pounds. There we go. So as you may, if you may see in here, the units are completely consistent, because um, in this case we're going to be able to obtain BTUs per hour. Why? Because we have in here pounds per pounds, just like um, they're going to. Okay, let's see the consistency in here. So Q unit is Q BTUs per hour. So we have in here, uh, let's do this with another color. So that's going to be, let's use orange for the first time. So cubic feet, cubic feet. And then we're going to have um, in here pounds, pounds. And at the end, we're going to have BTUs hour. Same in here, BTUs per hour. So the units are consistent. So that's what we have to obtain. But now what we have to play with is these units because in the rule of thumb, we want to be able to plug in grains per pound. We don't want to do in pounds of weather, pounds of dry air. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is, again, the, another uh, conversion factor, which is going to be, um, this is going to be W, delta W, divided by 700. Okay, this is going to be W. In, but this is kind of confusing. So it, because it's a little bit confusing in this case, because you might say, why are you putting W, uh, delta W in here and here delta W? So in order to make it more um, reasonable, uh, more uh, in order to make it better, let's put an asterisk in here, asterisk. There we go. What does the asterisk mean? It means that the delta W asterisk units are pounds of moist air per pounds of dry air. In other words, I'm going to put an asterisk here. Okay. See, pounds of moist air. I'm going to put an asterisk here. And I'm going to put, there's no more, uh, there's one more in here, asterisk. There you go. Whenever I'm saying delta and asterisk, I'm talking about that it's pounds of moist air divided by pounds of moist air, uh, dry air. This doesn't have an asterisk or a star, star. So that means that this is in grains per pound. Okay? So, and this is with no asterisk, it would be in grains per pound. Divided by 700. Why, why is it 7,000? Because one pound of moist air is equal to 7,000 grains, which is like droplets, as we explained. All right. So let's continue with this, and that's going to be equal to the following. So that's going to be Q equals to the density times CFM. We're getting there, we're getting there, times 60, times delta 
w star or asterisk but that is equal to what we're plugging in is actually the following see there we go we're gonna put in here in green that's gonna be delta w divided by 7000 and then times delta h which is i mean a specific enthalpy there we go so we're pretty much ready completely ready so for air for air at the standard conditions uh, let's put standard conditions conditions we already know that the density is equal to 0 0.075 and that's going to be pounds per cubic feet okay so we have this part let's put this with um, pink we have this and now we need to find this what is the specific enthalpy of uh, of water okay of moisture so this is for air and this is for water for water which is the wet part for water this is going to come from a steam steam tables steam tables and we're going to make an assumption so if we have in here for example an air handle unit and we have a coil so entering air is going to be equal at design conditions say 75 fahrenheit and usually this comes out at 50 see yeah 50 fahrenheit let's do that assumption it could be 45 or 55 but in this case it's going to be 50 so we're going to find the change in temperature the specific enthalpy at 50 okay so the specific enthalpy at 50 is going to be equal to 1065 and that's going to be BTUs, BTUs per pound a specific enthalpy so a specific enthalpy at that temperature and this is the air handler unit AHU it's going to be 1065 now everything is ready so we're going to put this in pink so we have this we have that so what we're going to do is plug it in in the last equation in the last part q equals to let's put it with pink again so the pink says this is going to be 0 0.075 times we have in here cfm times we need to continue with pink which is 60 times now we have um what do we have change in humidity ratio now we have another number right here divided by 7000 times a specific enthalpy so the specific enthalpy is going to be 1065 and already if you do the math with all these numbers you're going to be able to obtain q equals with pink 0 0.68 and you can also do the math times cfm times delta w all right so i hope you enjoyed this video and also this is very important because um in, in the next videos we're going to be talking about heat load calculations we're going to be using right soft we're going to be using the, the we're going to be explaining about that so that's why in these videos i'm explaining a lot about the total heat i'm talking about the sensible heat and now finally i'm talking about the latent heat so we know where it comes from and we're more knowledgeable and at the end of the day we just need to know this rule of thumb but it's also important to know where it comes from so this is how it works okay so if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and share all right thanks so much